So, you know, it's it's so funny, Lebris, because it's almost like our conversation about a Pilates class the other day. Like, you don't want your, your son to walk into a relationship and then be like, who was your mother? This woman taught you nothing. Like... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No. with my son one one thing that i dislike about many men is their inability to fend for themselves in a, in a household way okay. so you know maybe they don't know how to cook or they they can't iron a shirt or make a bed i don't know what it is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so for my son i was like well i don't want him to go out and find a woman just based on her home ec skills you know what I mean? Right. Like I right. want him to be able to fall in love with a woman based on the person that she is and and their bond together, not for anything that it, filling a hole of what he's not able to do. Not able to do. Himself. Great. Yes, so yes. from very early on, he learned how to do laundry, cooking, cleaning, you know, taking care of the house, changing diapers, whatever, everything. So mm -hmm. now he is a fully a hundred percent self-functioning 21 year old that does not need his mama no seriously yes. like you know it's he, he does everything on his own so. you know it's it's so funny Libris, because it's almost like our conversation about a pilates class the other day like you don't want your your son to walk into a relationship and then be like who was your mother this woman taught you nothing like <laughs> <laughs> exactly no like Somebody out there is gonna thank me. Whoever ends yes. up with him, they're gonna be like, "Dang, this guy could do so much." Mm -hmm. no? Yeah. No, but seriously. Yeah. Or, or this guy's gonna poor guy's gonna spend his life scouring and trying to find someone like his mom and never no. find anybody. <laughs> Oops. Uh, <laughs> <probably> not. <laughs> no, I will say that one thing that has uh, frustrated me about the self quarantine issue, or with the version of homeschooling and online schooling is that the children are in front of screens all the time, you know, and right. it's something that I've really, in the raising of my children really worked against is all the screen time. Mm -hmm. And, and now that's all they have. Is screen it's the standard, right? It's, yeah. It's the standard. And with our son, and again, he's 21 now, we were so extreme with him in the raising of him. This is going to sound crazy. Are you ready for it? From age 10, <laughs> age 10 to 16, he did not watch any TV. He had no video games, mm. no smartphone, nothing. So, yes. um, and he survived. Right. Not only did he survive, <laughs> but he was valedictorian of his high school. He graduated with honors and he is a pilot as a hobby. He got his private pilot's license at age 18. Um, he is an amazing person. I, yeah. And I feel part of what makes him who he is is that he didn't have so much access to the media. Right. And all that screen time and all the video game mm -hmm you know, all that addiction that video games can mm -hmm. create. He didn't have yes. that. Right, right, right. Yeah, that you know, distraction. And I, would, I would check in with him. Yeah. Sometimes I would think like, oh, God, is, you know, is he going to be resentful of this? And I would, you know, every now and then, year to year, I would check in and see, you know, how are you doing, Alexander? Are you okay with this whole you know, no TV thing. And he'd be like, oh yeah, I'm fine, mom. It, you know, it's all pretty much worthless anyway. And if there's mm -hmm. anything that, you know, really pressing I need to know, my friends just tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like getting the Reader's Digest version. Yes. Of, uh, you know, so that, I think that's really fascinating to, mm. to have a person that age. And then on the flip side, he didn't suffer as far as technology is concerned. He's actually uh, a total technology expert now and does a lot of tech support for many of my clients and the village that we live in. He's a, an Apple expert and can build websites and all kinds of things. I, I don't know quite how that
doesn't seem to be, you know, like, like he, he missed out on anything. And one of the ways I found this worked really well with my boys before this quarantine, in terms of having conversations with them, is simply just having conversations in the car. Yeah. Because I just discovered that for my boys, if you're sitting face to face with them, how was your day? Good. What'd you do? Nothing. Do you, you know, like one word answer. <laughs> yeah, totally. And then you get in the car, it's like, dad, you just seen this. My friend did this. We wrote to him with this. We're doing this. I did this movement basketball. Da, 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 da. Like just they go, right? So yeah. it came to a point where my strategy, and for you dads out there working with boys, this is a strategy that I found has worked best for me. If you're going to a restaurant, you're going to a coffee shop or something along those lines, you want to have a conversation, go to a far coffee shop. Have the conversation in the, <laughs> in car, the car on the way to the coffee shop. Get your hot chocolate, turn around and drive back and you'll have a better conversation on the way there and back than in your interrogation while you're sitting in the restaurant. Boys talk shoulder to shoulder and girls talk face to face. Ah. So that's yeah. where that strategy came from. So you're saying with your husband, you're shoulder to shoulder. There's that conversation, that comfort that comes from someone not like across an you know, uh, interrogation table and a, you know, sort of thing. Whereas for women, that's typically speaking, that face to face conversation, it seems more comfortable. So like that, that strategy I heard and I found like for, for my boy specifically that that works great. And I just observed that for many people that boys talk shoulder to shoulder, girls talk face to face. But what we instill in them, because if we didn't spend the time instilling the proper principles and expectations when they're younger, it doesn't matter what we police now. They can find a workaround to hide from us if they wanted to. Yeah. So... So that being said, I have access to codes. I do want monitor what they do, but they have access to everything because it's out there in the world. I mean, like I can't control what they watch when they go to school. I have to just trust that they are following the principles that we've instilled in them. And there's, there has to be an element of trust at some point beyond my policing what I'm, you know, what they do. See that I find super interesting um, I think it would be fascinating for you to have like one of these interviews with my son mm -hmm. on this topic. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not even going to voice it for him because I think he says it so much better than I do. This, yes. these whole concepts, um, he actually led a whole um, tutorial at the, at a parent teacher conference at our daughter's school okay. um, for parents on parental controls and how to implement them on all the devices and everything, mm -hmm. you know, for, because a lot of parents don't know how, how to even set it up or anything like that. Yeah. And he has a lot of really interesting opinions on that, that I think hearing it from someone his age is almost more powerful than hearing it from another parent yes I, I can see how for sure there's a credibility from the from the parent from the child himself like from the yeah 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 just the his take on the whole concept of having access to everything yes. yeah go alexander yeah you need yeah, yeah you need yeah. because uni was in switzerland she came and visited us in switzerland so she stayed mm -hmm. with <laughs> She has first-hand experience yeah. with all my family, all my yeah. kids. A lot of times, when we have conversations like this, if you look at the other side of it, you almost fear that it's going to come across as judgmental or it's going to come across as um, holier than thou in his presentation. And I don't think that you're coming across that way at all. But like, please put that other side out, out there because I mean, it 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 does challenge us as parents to to draw a new line line in the sand to look at things in a different way and I, I personally like to be challenged in that way you mean if you i know. just tell you flat out that i disagree I yeah mm, yeah i wrong totally with that. disagree yeah i i feel like it is our job as a parent to put limits on because it is the access to what we all have access to is 
already too much for adults, for most adults. It's, yes. it's more than an adult can handle. And to mm -hmm. think that a 12, 13 year old who has a smartphone has the ability to filter or use proper judgment, it's not about what we've instilled in them. I, I trust That's my good. kids. I know that I've instilled principles in them but if they are have an onslaught of of access to images that I mean are for me horrifying, I can't expect mm -hmm. my thirteen year old to know how to cope with that. And I feel like it, it's our job that for at least certain amount of years to to still let them be able to be children. Like they yes. they shouldn't have to be confronted with so much atrocity and disgustingness that mm -hmm. is there's plenty of time for that later on and yep. it's, it I, I really do think that it's just too much if you think about so you and i are about the same age we're both in mm -hmm. our you know mid 40s ish okay i'm pushing 50 whatever <laughs> i saw your smile um, approximately the same age you know we yes. grew up in the 70s right mm -hmm. um i would say that the childhood that you and i had the childhood that had no computer. You remember those mm -hmm. days? Yes. We had no computer. We had no phone that didn't even have no cordless phones. We had no answering right. machines. If you right. weren't home, you just tried and called later. Do you know yes. what I mean? Like yep. there, there were no monitoring devices. Mm -hmm. We, we had no apps. There was no internet. Right. So we grew up in a time where we, we did not have exposure to the things that we're all exposed to now. True. And we're, we're asking of our children what was never asked of us, ever. You yeah. know? The, yes. The, not even TV. I didn't even have cable TV. I had like five, four channels, you know? There, there was, mm -hmm. you know. So if you think about the expectations that we have of our children. Right, right. Why? Why do we expect our children to be able to navigate the the internet world that exists today? Why? Why should they be able to? I don't think that I think that's too much to ask of a child, of a young adult. It's too much. I agree. That's, no, you know, honestly that's, that's the, and I think you have even a stronger opinion on that. And that, but like, that's, that's, I agree with you on that completely that we have put it on them to make those educated decisions and they don't, they don't have the capacity to make those decisions. So why, why expose them to those options? Yeah.